patient is a 70-year-old man who was admitted by his cardiologist with the diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome. The patient has not had coronary angioplasty or coronary bypass surgery in the past. The patient consented to and underwent a diagnostic left heart cardiac catheterization and, and coronary arteriography by Judkins technique, which showed extensive arteriosclerotic coronary occlusion of the left anterior descending, which is abbreviation LAD. Other vessels also had minor coronary artery disease. Prior to the procedure, the patient understood there was a possibility that he would require a coronary stent placement to which he also consented. Following completion of the diagnostic catheterization, the physician performed a percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty with the insertion of one non-drug eluding coronary stent into the left anterior descending. The physician's final diagnosis was acute coronary syndrome due to arteriosclerotic coronary artery disease. The patient was discharged for follow-up evaluation. And I can't read the bottom because there's something on my screen. And cardiac rehabilitation therapy, but I can't read before that, so I apologize. There's a block on my little screen with the control. So what is the procedure that we're coding here? Well, we're not coding the cardiac cath, right? Because this was already done. So we're not coding that. And then we're not coding why it was done, right? So the, the whole first paragraph um, up until where it said, which showed extensive arteriosclerotic coronary occlusion of the left anterior descending, other vessels also had minor coronary artery disease. That's all why they're bringing the patient for the angioplasty. Okay, so that whole first paragraph is really background information. And then it tells that he consented to this procedure during that one, just in case they found anything. So we don't have to code that, right? That's again just background information. So then if we go down like three quarters of the way down where it says the physician performed a percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty, this is our procedure. This is what we're coding, okay? So we performed this angioplasty with the insertion of one non-drug eluding coronary stent into the LAD, again, which is left anterior descending, that's the artery. And then the, the last part we're not coding either. That's a diagnosis. So we don't care what the diagnosis is in this class. We're not coding that. Again, in real life, you would code the acute coronary syndrome and you would code the arteriosclerotic artery disease. But in our class, we're just coding the procedure, which is a percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty with the insertion of one non-drug eluding coronary stent. Okay, so let's break this down. Um, percutaneous is just how they're doing it. Transluminal is just that they're inside a, a luminal, right? A pseudo-organ. Coronary is the heart. Angioplasty. If we break down that word, it's just surgical repair of the heart, right? With the insertion of one non-drug eluding coronary stent into the left anterior descending. So they're putting the stent in. What do they put a stent in for? What is the intent of the procedure here? Why is a stent put in place? What do you guys think? They're repairing the heart here for what purpose? Well, if you guys aren't sure what a stent is, there's some nice clues in the report. So if we go back up to the diagnosis, which I know I told you that you don't have to code because you don't, but it does tell us the purpose of the stent if you're not sure. So it says um, in like the fifth sentence that the coronary arteriography, which is part of the cardiac cath, um, by Judkins technique, which showed extensive arteriosclerotic coronary occlusion. So occlusion is when um, the blood vessel or the artery is is blocked, right? So we're putting this stent in to dilate that, to open that up so that the blood can flow. So again, if you weren't sure what a 
coronary angioplasty with a stent is, you can always look that up. Or if you know what occlusion means, that should give you a hint of what they're doing here. But you always ask yourself what the intent is. So the intent here is our patient has little blood flow because of this pocket, right? So we're going to put in a stent to open up that artery so the blood flows, okay? So the intent is to dilate that. So that's our root operation is dilation. So what is the what is the definition of dilation? Hopefully you guys are there in your appendix. It is expanding an orifice or the lumen of a tubular body part, which an artery is. Explanation is the orifice can be a natural orifice or an artificially created one, accomplished by stretching a tubular body part using intraluminal pressure or by cutting part of the orifice or wall of the tubular body part. Okay, so, <coughs> sorry, we're going to look up dilation. And then you ask yourself, where? Where was this done? Okay, so if we go to D in our PCS index, the front of the book, we're going to go to D to dilation. Dilation of what? What are we dilating? We're dilating an artery right? The left anterior descending, which is one of the coronary arteries. Again, if you're not sure where these are, you can look in that body part appendix in the back. You can Google it. You can use your A&P book or kind of references. But you have to understand the elements that you're coding as you're coding. So the LAD is one of the coronary arteries. So under dilation on page 405, or 45, sorry, um, I'm going to go dilation and then artery and then coronary. And we can see that we can pick four or more arteries, one artery, three arteries, or two. Well, we just did one, right? The left anterior. So if we go to one artery under coronary, we see the number 0, 2, 7, 0. So our table is. 0 to 7, and then we're going to be in column where the 0 is. So let's find table 0 to 7. So it's on page 169, 0, 2, 7, and then our fourth character was 0, and if we look at the table, that's only in one column, so we know we're in the first row there. So now we can move to the fifth character, our approach. So we can pick open, percutaneous, or percutaneous endoscopic. Again, you go back to your op report, right, and it tells us, like four, four or five sentences up from the bottom, the physician performed a percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. So percutaneous, we know that we're going to do the character what? Three, right? They didn't put in a scope. It's not a percutaneous, um, any kind of scope. It didn't say percutaneous arthroscopy or percutaneous endoscopy or percutaneous hysteroscopy. There's not an oscopy there to let us know it's a scope, so we're picking three. And then now we're at the sixth character, our device. So what character there? Again, you go back to your op report, and it tells us that the patient had a non-drug-eluting coronary stent. So from there, which character would meet that device character? Okay, well, you guys 
I see the first half are drug eluding. So intraluminal device drug eluding are specifically said non-drug eluding. So we're going to pick D. Good job. We're going to pick D, just intraluminal device, because ours was non-drug eluding. So we're not picking one of the ones that says drug eluding, and we're not picking no device because we did have a device. We had a non-drug eluding pin. Okay? So we're going to pick D for just one intraluminal device. And then let's move to our seventh character. That column we can pick six, bifurcation, or Z, no qualifier. So again, you go back to your op report and see if you see documentation of bifurcation. Do you guys see anything documented there at all? If not, we're going to pick Z for no qualifier. That's right, no qualifier. So our code for this one is 